Hey everyone, Lisa Finkel coming to you from um, Finkel Pottery on the east coast of Canada um, on a Sunday in a studio that is rapidly going to crap <laughs> because there's a sale coming up and I don't know if any of you are like this, but things just pile up because you, you get really busy and then you don't stay organized. So anyway, uh, we'll get her fixed. Um, so I wanted to show you some results from the kiln opening that I had. Um, and I'm just going to dive right in. So, um, first off, oh, so this kiln was fired to, uh, it went to a very hot five, um, Camille Hoffman, uh, slow, cool schedule and with the top temp of 2185 Fahrenheit. So the first thing I did was, um, one of the glazes I've been struggling to use cause you spend a lot of money on glazes is, um, Mako Nimbus. So someone had sent me this suggestion, um, Anna from Anna's Clay House. Thank you, Anna. So um, I gave it a shot and actually it turned out not too bad. Uh, very rustic, very rustic, but I think in the right um, setting, someone will love this. So the inside is three coats of Nimbus all the way, two coats of Nimbus on the rim. And then, and those of you who can correct me on my pronunciation, because I'm not sure. Three coats of Cordovan, Cordovan on the outside, and then two coats of Cordovan in swoops on the rim. And uh, it turned out pretty cool. And you can really see how, like look here, Nimbus has potential for that feathering effect um, and also the sparkly effect inside. So. Um, you know, I think there's some possibilities with it, and certainly this is pleased with this. No, no issues with this whatsoever. My favorite pieces out of the kiln, I've never made them before, and I made them for the first time, and were uh, noodle bowls. So I did four in two different glaze applications. Look at that. So, um... I put two divots in here, two little holes in here, and then, you know, get my, oops, there we go. Chopsticks in there. So what did I do to get this lovely color combo is what you're asking yourselves. So most of these are commercial glazes. The only exception would be the bottom of this, which is my Studio Blue. But really, cobalt would work, I'm sure, the exact same. So I dipped it in Studio Blue to about here. I did three coats of um, Spectrum Pearl White, which I am rapidly falling in love with. It is so luminescent. Um, and of course, it creates lovely runs. And inside a bowl, you can have great fun with it because you're not in the same risk of running. Then I did um, Spectrum Twilight on the rim, two coats, just a little inside the rim and a little outside the rim. Then over that on the outside, I did three coats of Spectrum Autumn Purple. And then I think probably two coats of Spectrum Autumn Purple on the inside, just like a little lip of it. And uh, Wow, guys, look at that. It turned out great. So, so happy. And here's the other one and then that exact same treatment. And that twilight, when you put it under like sangria or autumn purple, um, it just creates some drama on the rim, which I like, some definition to draw the eye to. The next one, I've been chasing turquoise for a while. Turquoise is one of my all-time favorite colors. And um, I was looking for kind of a specific turquoise that I hadn't found. And I'm, I think I found it. Pretty excited. Uh, it's called Coyote Turquoise Lake. I'm sure some of you have tried it. Uh, beautiful, beautiful color. The only thing I will say is my application might be a tiny bit patchy. Um, so next time I would put either a fourth coat or just go a little heavier on my coats. I'd never used it before and sometimes coyote glazes can be quite runny. So, although this one is very, very stable. So look at this. Oh, 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 oh. And then 
inside. Wow, wow, wow. So love, love, love. So what did I do here? So inside, I did three coats of Honey Flux, Amico Honey Flux. Then I did three coats of Coyote Turquoise Lake to the lip. And, um, no, I didn't put Turquoise Lake inside, just on the, up to here. Then I dipped it very carefully, almost dropped it which is always a disaster. I dipped it up to about here in, um, oh, Laguna Power Turquoise, which you could paint on, no problem. And then I, so then of course the Power Turquoise went inside here and inside here. And then I did, um, just short of the Power Turquoise, uh, Light Flux, make a Light Flux, both inside and out. And then on the very edge of the Mako Light Flux, I put like two coats, just dab, dab, dab with a little brush of uh, Raspberry Mist. Wow. Raspberry Mist is another glaze that when I first got it, I was kind of meh, but um, it's got some really cool applications. One of the things I love about it is it does not burn out very easy and it kind of sticks around. So this, it turned out, look at that. Check that out. That was a love 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 and my holes didn't fill in which was like a miracle in itself because there was a lot of glaze at that rim but anyway so here's the other one and the honey flux also not as luminescent as the pearl white but also does such interesting things inside love 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 and then here's the outside of this one so cool love them um, I don't need to show you these. I've already showed you these. I was just doing a Facebook Live for my customers and showed them a few more things that I've already showed you guys. Uh, so this is just a freeform tray with um, mermaids and sea life and a starfish for an accent and a little wave pattern on the rim. So the, the glaze on this one is called Pottery Supply House Cobaltic Sea. And I had tried it already a few times and, and some of their glazes are very, this is the back, which is a little bit splotchy, but I kind of like it. It kind of looks like underwater. Um, and some of their glazes are a bit on the translucent side. So they're not like super solid glazes, which is lovely when you're using texture. So I thought, I'd used it on a solid and I'm like, eh, it's a little bit patchy. Kind of like the Celadons can be, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So I thought I want to try it on, um, on texture and wow, well, it just sings on texture. And I had, um, topaz, uh, <laughs> coyote frosted topaz on the rim just a little bit. It's very subtle. Um, you can't really see it unless you're looking for it, but just added a little turquoise feature on the rim. So those turned out happy with those. It was a pretty good firing. There was a few things I wasn't thrilled with, but most things I was pretty happy with. So um, you gotta be happy with that. So this one is um, my studio liner inside. And a few people were asking me about how I apply and I pour and I dip and I paint on, but really guys just go for it. Um, there's a few things that don't like it, but really, I think I haven't done anything yet that it doesn't react well. So I think it's more just making sure you don't put your glaze on too thick. So for this one, this is just my studio white. That's a studio white. So all I do is I take my white glaze, I pour it in, I pour it out, I hold it upside down till it stops dripping. And I go away and I leave that. And, and it helps your glaze application because your clay starts to get saturated. Um, so you let it dry so that the clay dries out again or the, the piece dries out again. Then I dipped it in my Pottery Supply House red wine. I call it cranberry, but it's red wine. And then I did uh, three coats of Spectrum Sangria on the rim. And uh, it's very vibrant. Took some pictures for my Facebook page with some pretty spring tulips and it, it really sang. So this one, trying to remember what I did on this one. So, you know, I don't take notes. Um, so inside is white. 
bottom, I know the bottom is um, Norse blue. Take a Norse blue. And then I did a dip in my Studio Blue. And Lordy. Oh, no, no, no. Now I know what I did. Sorry. First, I dipped the rim in alabaster. Then I dipped the rim in my Studio Blue. Then I dipped it in Norse Blue, slightly overlapping that. And that's what I got. And it's really, really cool. It's a little bit sparkly. It's also a little matte right here. But, by it get, but when it gets to the rim, for some reason, it gets nice and smooth again, like very glossy. So perfect for drinking your coffee or tea or whatever. So that turned out really pretty. <laughs> Took me a minute to remember what I did. The brain is not always cooperative. So this is more of this Coyote Lake Blue. So bottom, just um, three coats of Lake Blue. Top is three coats of Coyote Fairy Rose. They weren't meeting. I left a band. And then in that band, I put um, two or three coats of um, just dabbing it on where they meet and overlapping a little bit of uh, river birch, Amico River birch. So I think that turned out quite nice. There's a lot of lake blue, lake blue in here because I was really kind of playing with it to see if I liked it. So this is lake blue to here. And this is Spectrum Curry with an overlap to, you know, and check that out. Check the color variation. That is pretty. I'll be doing that again. This one is a glaze I'd kicking around for a long time, so I thought I should try to use some of it up. So this is Coyote Frosted Topaz to here with an overlap of um, Spectrum Autumn Purple, which is becoming one of my new favorite glazes. It's uh, it's purple, but it's also pink and it's blue. And depending how you use it, it just all sorts of variations. So that's lovely. Uh, this one is just a uh, dip in alabaster, one coat of Winterwood, and then an overlap of three coats of Spectrum Soft Aqua. And the soft aqua, the soft blue, the soft pink, all of them, when they when they meet other glazes, they often get this soft white bleed in. So you don't even have to do anything to get that variation. It just happens on its own, which is nice. And this would be exact same uh, treatment, but instead of soft aqua, it is soft red. Which soft red is so interesting. It's hard to get it on camera. Um, I did a bunch of these call them watercolor mugs. And I had to refire some of them because I didn't like, I didn't get enough blending. I think the, I did one batch, one first, and it turned out lovely, but I, I had only put one coat of the glazes on and I forgot that I did that because I don't take notes. So the second time I put two coats and two coats was too much without putting either some flux over it or whatever. So one coat, if you're gonna try this would be my advice. So it is two coats of honey flux, one coat of river birch all over. And then I just did splot random splotches of raspberry mist, eggplant on this one. And I think this is cactus. The cactus, because it refired, lost some of its green, but it's still pretty, pretty nice. Um, this one, I, I was trying to remember before I started the video what I did in this. I cannot remember. Sorry. Uh, so it is the Coyote Lake Blue. Beautiful. And something on top. Might be pearl white, actually. Um, but it's getting some pink, so I don't know if it's coming from the, the Lake Blue or... But I don't think I put pink on it. Anyway, sorry. Can't remember. Brain dead on that one. Check out this one. Wow. Love this one. So this one is uh, Norse Blue. This soft aqua, meeting slightly. Uh, then a dip on the top over the soft aqua, just like a little dip, not all the way, of um, Laguna Power Turquoise. And then some flux, just a little dab of flux in the middle where they meet. And I love, I love, I love that. I will do, be doing that one again. Another lake blue. 
with two coats of honey, so lake blue to here, two coats of honey flux, and one coat of river birch on there. So that's quite pretty. Clean and simple. This might be the last turquoise lake in this patch. I went a little crazy. So this one is uh, turquoise lake all over in this little bowl and then a very light coat or a single coat of um, Mako Night Moth. If I did it again, sometimes when I use Night Moth, I sponge where it's medium color because it doesn't run a lot. Um, so I would do that if I was doing that again. I would just sponge along there just to soften that line a little bit. Like I apply it first and then I just sponge a little along the line with the, like a sea sponge, something with a lot of holes in it. Um, this one, same application, two honey flux, one river birch, eggplant, raspberry mist, and uh, the green. So they're all a little different, of course. And they've, they've all been refired, this bunch, because I wasn't happy with them. Um, this one is eggplant, Norse blue, and cactus. So we can, you can see that the eggplant and the raspberry mist are very strong compared to the other colors. So that's something for me to keep in mind too. Um, so this one is, um, this is the red wine, Potter's Supply House red wine with um, autumn purple. So, you know, refires give us and they take us away. And this one, I had a spot that it had crawled and in the refiring, I added a little and refired. And in the refiring, um, I lost some of the vibrancy. And there's a couple of really like mini, mini pinholes. I'm not refiring, I'll just sell it like that as a second. Um, it, they're very minute, but um, they weren't there the first time. So, you know, sometimes you, you win and sometimes you lose with that stuff. So here's another uh, watercolor one with the eggplant Norse blue in the green. And then this one, raspberry mist, eggplant, and cactus. Okay, these I haven't done for a while, but I really like them. Um, this is um, Mako Frosted Lemon to here, then dipped with uh, Laguna Power Turquoise and then two coats of seaweed over that, over the Power Turquoise. and. Uh, Sometimes, if you're really lucky, you can kind of get that little fiery edge where they meet. So those turned out. This is a combo I haven't done in a while. And this one is my um, Studio Tamuku Gold dipped. Laguna Power Turquoise dipped. Um, a band of light flux where the green and the brown meet, and then two coats of seaweed on the rim. And the Tamuku gold, sometimes it's really goldy, but this is nice. I like it when you get just like a smattering of the gold in it. So that turned out well. And here's the other one. This one, um, I got a bit of crawling, but you can see the color is still there, so I don't think I want to refire it. It's just in the dimples, the glaze didn't want to run down. These are has these have four finger dimples. And I don't think I want to refire it because I think I would just have a mess on my hands. So I think I'm just going to leave it as is. Um, this one is the dip in alabaster, then two coats of raspberry mist, and then a dip in... Um, Norse blue and you get this this time which it didn't happen to me last time I used this treatment I got this really nice little band of purple showing up too which is new it might be how I applied it I'm thinking this might be where it went over alabaster without raspberry mist maybe maybe it had a little bit of alabaster without raspberry mist I'm not sure if anyone knows that um chime in uh, this one is the alabaster and then the uh, Mako Frosted Lemon, two coats. So I dipped alabaster, uh, two coats of Mako Frosted Lemon, and then a dip in Norse Blue. And look how soft that Frosted Lemon came out. Like, wow. 
That's really pretty. Very, very, very subtle, um, but gorgeous. Um, another one with the red wine and the autumn purple. This is Pottery Supply House. This is Spectrum. They don't, they just meet. I don't overlap the purple over it. It would be interesting to try that though. And this one was just a refire. This was my Pikes Purple. And the first time I did it, it came out really patchy. I don't think I stirred my glaze enough. So I added some of the Pikes Purple to it. And then I added um, Reactive Red on Black. Um, this is my Studio Black, but I think it also works on Obsidian. Um, you get these really cool purpley um, shadings, which is really hard to see because I added more because I liked it. And I thought, oh, I'll add some more and try to get more purple. But um, it basically burnt out. Like there's hardly any left of any of it. So less than when I the first one. But this is so much better. So I'm quite happy with it. This is just another one with the alabaster. The raspberry mist and then the dip in blue. And a couple of refires. And they, of course, dripped so much more because they were refires, but I had crawling and they turned out perfect, except I'll just have to grind them a little bit. So uh, my studio green, my studio blue, but any green or blue would work. Then a coat of, um, not a coat, dabs of um, olive float, kind of all over the blue, not the green. And then dabs of, random dabs of light flux. And that's what you get. So those turned out much better, second firing. Of course, they look different. The crystallization and stuff is different because of the refire. So I think that's it. Happy to get on here and share with you guys. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe. It really does help. Um, kind of encourages us to keep on going when we see people um, engaging with the content. Because um, it is a little bit of work to get it set up and going so anyway i hope everyone's well and safe and i'll pop on next time so thanks for watching